So one of the things that you'll hear a lot of people talk about uh, in planning for the Camino and how to sort of cope with the Camino is listen to your body. Well, what does that mean? That's what I'm going to talk about this week, coming right up. Okay, it might sound obvious, but, you know, what does listening to your body mean while you're walking a Camino? Um, and excuse me for doing the whole sort of selfie stick thing while I'm walking, but it's kind of a routine that I go through while I'm walking, and it's easier for me to explain it while I'm walking. So really what you're trying to do is to check in and be aware of how your body is coping at various stages of the day and of your Camino. Um, and you're looking for very subtle things. So, you know, maybe you kind of know all of this, but I find this approach makes me very aware of little things that could be going wrong so that I can fix them before they become big things. And of course, the, you know, the key thing is blisters. If you know what to look out for early, you can actually stop the blisters. <clears throat> so I have a little bit of a routine during the first half hour or so of my walk. And it, I kind of check in a few times during the day and it's it's not a conscious thing it's a little bit like when you're driving the car you're looking at the dashboard and you're looking at your speed and the fuel consumption and the water temperature or you know flying a plane you're just scanning the instruments it's exactly like that it's not I'm not distracted from my walk or thinking or anything like that I'm just kind of constantly aware of what's going on so <clears throat> what I do is I tend to to work from my feet up during the first half hour or so I let myself warm up and I'm just going through each part of the body so I'm feeling my toes at the moment I noticed um, a little bit of pain on one of the toes yesterday so I investigated that last night and it's I'm not sure what's causing it it could be hitting the top of the shoe or something um, and so I actually put a bit of hiker's wool around it and some tape uh, so I'm aware of that and, and making sure that that doesn't sort of get worse or uh, develop into something. And then, uh, sorry to go on about my bloody injuries all the time, but <laughs> I started this Camino injured again. It seems to be par for the course for me. So I, I've been having a little bit of plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis. So literally the week before I came here, I had cortisone injections. So I'm really aware of my feet and making sure that I look after them and nurse them through this Camino. Um, if you're wondering where I am, I'm uh, walking through the Sierra Norte Park on the Via de la Plata. So a long way to go, got to look after my feet. Um, and so I'm, I'm just now very aware of my heels. The left one, <coughs> a little bit of tightness towards the back. Um, <coughs> so I'm gonna have to watch that and I'll, I'm gonna stretch that regularly through the day just you know those sort of calf stretches it stretches out the plantar fascia and the Achilles tendon but otherwise seem pretty good uh, working up the legs I'm looking for tightness in the front of the the shins so, <clears throat> just in case I'm getting shin splints so I can do stretches for that or I actually have if you've been on the channel for a while you know I carry a foam roller um, and that's really good to prevent shin splints all of this stuff is about prevention so if I'm feeling you know the tightness in the shins I'll be getting that roller out and rolling my shins and then of course I'm feeling up the back of the calves my knees oh I'm feeling really decrepit this one um it is a <laughs> I am getting on a bit I'm 65 um so yeah all sorts of knee problems but knees are holding up okay actually I've got um some knee braces just in case I need them but I'd rather let my knees go without those initially and see if I can strengthen them a bit just check this sign straight on so they're okay that was that was the thing I was worried about coming up the legs the thighs a little bit of soreness in the thigh muscles um, so I've got to make sure I hydrate well that's a critical thing you know to keep your body functioning um, I'm carrying, you can see on the front there, a litre and a half today, which I've estimated is enough for this particular section. 
really got to keep those fluids going. Uh, <coughs> coming up around the sort of torso, lower back on the right side, I've got a little bit of a niggle there. I've <coughs> an old disc problem. Uh, so I made sure a couple of back K's back I actually lay down and did some <coughs> sort of cat stretches and things like that just to ease that. Um, upper body t tend not to get too many problems, shoulders are fine, neck's fine. So that's pretty much my little routine that I go through. Um, I make sure I do that every morning. Um, and then, like I say, I'm kind of, it's in the back of my mind, just watching out for little niggles as I'm walking. <clears throat> I'm very conscious of this left Achilles, so I'll be stretching that through the day. But otherwise, all is good. Maybe you've got some tips on how to care for your body during a Camino or ways that you kind of look out for stuff before they happen because that's the key that's the key to all of this it's being really aware so that if you're getting your hot spots in your boots and things like that you can treat it straight away so that it doesn't develop into anything that's that's the whole point of this sort of body awareness and catching things before they develop so do comment down below if you've got any other tips uh, along these grounds and uh I'm going to enjoy this view. Why the heck am I talking to you? I should be enjoying this view. So, bye for now and see you soon. <laughs>